Okay, Oscar. Now we have to find Dana's old house. Do you recall the number, Kate Walker? According to her registration form from the Music Academy, it was number 20. The bridge is exactly the same as it was back in the 1930s. Except that it's cleaner. It looks almost new, as if it had been renovated. A book about Vaughan's history during the war. Maybe it could be useful later. Looks like the residents on the bridge are pretty mad at the town council. There's number 20. Dana's old house. Souvenirs here look more upmarket than the ones I've seen elsewhere. Guten Tag, Fräulein. All our gifts are handmade by craftsmen in Wagen. Day in the region, Fräulein? Just passing through. Well, welcome to my little gift shop. Frau Heigel at your service. I must say you have a beautiful shop, Frau Heigel. Thank you, Fräulein. All our souvenirs are made for excellence, as we like to say here, all by local craftsmen. Were you looking for something in particular? Well, I'm actually looking for someone, not something. Someone who used to live in this house, and I was wondering if you could help. 
Well, there were quite a few owners before I bought the shop last autumn, so I can't really... So her name was Dana Rose. She lived here before the war. I was hoping to find some kind of trace of her here, so I could continue my search. I see. Well, I have heard of the roses, but I can't say if there's anything left of them inside the house. But don't you live here? No. My husband and I live in the suburbs. You see, the bridge was sacked just before the war, during the pogrom against the Vagrans. Oh, truly awful events. And then the neighborhood was bombed, just after the war during the liberation. And many of the houses were damaged, including this one. They were hastily renovated after the war, but they remain mostly derelict. Well, it doesn't look like the house was damaged, from what I can see. Your shop is charming, and so is the rest of the district. Thank you. That's because after the initial renovation, the council financed major rehabilitation work on the facades. But if the truth be told, they left the proprietors to foot the bill for our interiors. That's why my husband and I had to spend all our savings so that the shop interior shows the same high standard that we demand of our suppliers. That's a shame. Yes. And if the council persists in refusing to help fund the renovation works, there won't be any residents left on the bridge, let alone independent quality stores like mine. There'll be nothing left but bland franchise stores, like the one further along the bridge or on the musical square. You mentioned a pogrom against this neighborhood's vagrant community. Can you tell me more? As much as anyone who knows anything about Wagen, I guess. It happened in 1938, if I recall correctly. A few months after Austria and Ostertal were annexed by the Brown Shadow. What happened? Well, the Brown Shadow organized riots against Vagarans on false pretexts. It led to pogroms throughout all the annexed countries, including this house. Were the Roses home when it all happened? Like I said, Fraulein, I don't know, but I hope not. So between the pogrom, the bombing, and the whole house being renovated, there's little chance of me finding any trace of the Roses. It's not quite like that. To be honest, we didn't have the funds to renovate the rest of the house. So we used the upper floors for storing. Really? And now that you mention it, I do recall coming across old photographs from before the war, here and there in the house. The successive owners didn't want to throw them out, and I suppose they must have left them there. Would you mind if I went upstairs to take a look? Unless you would kindly bring the photos down yourself. Well, I can hardly leave the shop unattended while I go... I don't even know you, Fräulein. I see. In that case, would you mind if I had a look upstairs myself? Don't take it personally, Fräulein. But I don't know you enough to trust you. I'm very sorry. Now, if you'll excuse me, Fräulein, I have a customer. I conjecture that you were inefficient in trying to persuade the shopkeeper, Kate Walker. How are you going to access the upper floors now? I don't know, Oscar. By getting creative, I guess. I conclude I can trust you on that score, Kate Walker. Made in Wagen. More gifts. I would have preferred it to still be full of paintings, I think. It's right in Frau Heigl's line of vision, too. I'm gonna have to draw her away if I want to sneak through that service door to the upper floors.
If I could manage to draw Frau Heigl this way, I'd be able to get through the service door and to the staircase without her noticing. But how? Must have got it wrong. That's one shrill version of the Hymn of Wagen. What's that awful noise? Excuse me, sir. Oh, there it is. How awful. That certainly doesn't belong in my shop. We don't sell such cheap and tacky items. Great. I don't think Frau Heigl's noticed a thing. Why don't you try to locate Dana Rose's room, Kate Walker? Then you can look for more clues about her. Good idea. Let's just hope Frau Heigl won't come up. This is where Frau Heigl must take her breaks. In remembrance of the eternal bond between the Roses and the Zimmers. Signed, Adam Z. It's 
dark in here. Hardly surprising with those windows boarded up. More stock for the shop. This photo shows the house partially destroyed. Must have been taken after the bombing that preceded the liberation of Wagen. Nothing of interest in here. A double bed, plenty of space. Must have been Dana's parents' bedroom. So where's Dana's room then? The number of rooms don't add up. Just what I needed. Portrait. That must be Dana with her parents. There was a photo on top of these shelves on the first floor. It might give you a clue as to the whereabouts of Dana Rose's room. It's been bricked up, most likely during the post-war renovation works Frau Heigl spoke of. Huh. The bedroom in the background of the portrait must be located in the attic. According to the light and the clock behind Dana, her room must face north. That's it, Oscar. I think I know where Dana's room is. Enlighten me, Kate Walker. Well... One of the photos shows a bedroom that's not on the second floor, right? And we know 
that the staircase was bricked up during the renovation and led to another floor. So that's got to be where we'll find Dana's missing bedroom. It seems plausible, indeed. It does. And if we're lucky, the room might be pretty much like Dana left it all those years ago, and potentially with clues to put us back on our track. I've just got to find a way to get to that third floor bedroom. Seeing as you failed to create a positive bond with Frau Hegel, the next rational step would be to take a look outside the building, Kate Walker. You're right, Oscar. Let's go and see. Oscar, I need your opinion on this. Ah, that's better. Looks like that fire escape staircase serves every floor of the house. That is correct, Kate Walker. Perhaps you should find a way to use it. Better try something else. So what do you think, Oscar? I think I would have liked a body with longer front legs. I was talking about the window up there. Must be Dana's room, right? Oh, of course. There is a high probability that you are not wrong, Kate Walker. Looks like the staircase serves every floor, including Dana's. I conjecture that you are probably right, Kate Walker. The second floor windows will be of no use to reach the staircase. Well, we can't get to the staircase from the first floor windows. Indeed, Kate Walker. All the windows you could have used are obstructed. The ladder to the first floor is up. It's too high for me to pull down. Looks like there's a mechanism up there to lower the ladder. That drain pipe leads to a ledge that leads to the staircase. According to my calculations, the drain pipe will not hold you, Kate Walker. 
and even if you were lighter, the ledge is too narrow for you to stand on. Hey, are you trying to tell me something, Oscar? Yes, you are too heavy and too wide, Kate Walker. For the ledge. Gee, thanks, Oscar. So basically, it's not going to be easy to use the staircase to get to Dana's room. There is no other way. Access is denied from inside the first and second floors, and the third floor stairwell is bricked up. The fire escape staircase is the only possibility, Kate Walker. But you cannot climb up the drain pipe because of your weight and size. I heard you the first time, thanks. You are welcome, Kate Walker. So, the only way up is by the fire escape staircase, and that means lowering the ladder from the first floor. Well, in that case, there's only one solution. As you're so light and slim, Oscar, you'll have to climb up the drain pipe and walk across the ledge for me. Then you just need to activate the mechanism to lower the steps so that heavy me can take the staircase route. I was not made to climb up drain pipes, Kate Walker. I am a precision-made automaton. Come on, Oscar. You saved the day more than once at Baranor. It must be second nature by now. But how can I lower myself to scurrying like a... a rat? Because you're a fine fellow and my faithful friend? <sighs> Stay calm, Oscar. I'm coming. <sighs> Climbing like a common squirrel. This is a disgrace. Everything okay up there? Yes, Kate Walker. I just need to... Ah! I am, Kate Walker. Believe me, I am. You gotta jump now, Oscar. Hurry! Well done, Oscar. Glad that you're safe and sound. I guess that's one way of putting it, Kate Walker. I'm also glad you haven't lost your positive attitude. <laughs> That useless body. Now I must find another way. And climbing up all over again. Be careful there, Oscar. I'm going to need help here. Kate Walker! I... I'm going to need you again! How am I supposed to get rid of that pigeon? I can't throw it at the pigeon. But maybe I can use it some other way. Made our point, I guess. Now, maybe this body will be useful in the end. Thank <laughs> you. 
Locked, of course. Kate Walker, if I were meant to be used as a cannonball, I would have been given a fuse. This is highly irregular. Tuck your head in, Oscar. One. If Hans Borrelberg could see me now, two, how? three. Undignified. Oh my, oh my. Really? Is this any way to treat an intelligent automaton? Really, if Mr. Vorlberg could see me now... He would say, you've saved the day again, Oscar. You've exceeded all expectations by far. Okay, let's try and find out what became of Dana after she left the refuge. No doubt about it, this must have been Dana's room. It's from the Music Academy. Music symbols, but they don't seem related to the diploma. A part's missing. The room was ransacked and pillaged during a pogrom of the brown shadow, I guess. God, I hope Dana was away that day. something underneath. Can't reach it. Can't be that heavy. Uh, it won't open. I'm pretty sure I've collected all the clues I could in the room, though. I should take a look at the documents and items in my diary.
It won't open, and yet I'm pretty sure the combination of symbols is right. There must be something else to set with the wheels. This was written not long after her time at the refuge. A letter from Leon. So he did write back to Dana after the expedition left Kantar, the capital of Valtayar. The High Plateau of Valtayar, October 25th, 1937. My, My darling, darling Edelweiss. I hate myself for not sending you news more often, and for not being able to receive news of you. I find myself now, where probably no other modern-day human has ever ventured before. I regret to inform you that I won't be able to go back to Europe with my fellow survivors. Something bad happened during the expedition. 
I, no doubt, am partly to blame. Nevertheless, I would like you to know my version of the events. After hard days of hiking, we set up our base camp on the threshold of a high valley where rhododendrons grew. All the witnesses seemed to concur. This was where the Goru, the famous man of the mountains, was most frequently sighted. For many long weeks, we explored without success every valley and mountain surrounding the camp. Autumn was approaching, the rivers started to freeze at the edges, and the prospect of having to head back with nothing for our toil was becoming more and more apparent. The joyful banter of the first weeks was no more. The men were becoming moody and tense, especially our chief, Reinhard Berger. Up we get, Leon. Another day on a wild goose chase. I'd better get kitted up before going out. must remember to fill it up before I leave the camp. These biscuits don't compare with all Gustav's cooking, but at least they fill you up. No chance of me venturing into the mountain without that. The letters I got from Dana before leaving Kantar with the expedition. Hope I can get back to sketching the valley, but with Berger putting on the pressure at the moment, I doubt it. I'm so glad Junta lent it to me. I was able to take wonderful pictures behind Berger's back.
better get going before. Do you know what time it is? Time to be heading out? Enough! You couldn't care less whether we find the Gorons or not, could you? Well, mark my words, Cobatis. You'd better change your bloody attitude. The day's only just bloody breaking. I couldn't give a damn. Everyone has already started except you. So you just get your butt upstream and help Sauer carry out his research. The idiot is capable of getting himself lost again. All right, all right. I'm not your enemy, you know. I... I don't think you understand the gravity of the situation, Leon. If we don't find a specimen of the Goron, the brown shadow will... Look, just go find Sauer. Please. Now! Hmm. Horst has already left. The scolding that Berger gave them yesterday about their lack of results in tracking down the Gorons really got to him. All those books. Only Horst could cut about works of anthropology beyond the frontiers of the known world. The march of science knows no bounds for him. Sauer's thesis. From what I understand, he accepted to work for the Brown Shadow because they were the only ones who would finance his research. What a waste. Goethe's Faust. One of Junta's posh friends, Murnau, if I remember rightly, turned it into a film about ten years ago. I think the poor chap's dead now, though. Poor animal. Berger's gone out of his mind with this search for the abominable snowman of his. The mountain's dangerous, and we're prepared for the worst. I only hope we don't have to use it. Not what you'd call cute, this Gorun. Just as well they haven't found it yet. It can't have been easy for Bauer to leave his daughter just after she was born. Bauer's daughter. I sometimes forget I'm not the only one who left behind someone dear back across the mountains. This medal must belong to Bauer. He must have left it behind when he turned in for the night. Hmm. No one here. Bauer and Iega must have already taken off in search of the Gorun. Jaeger and Bauer have been a bit heavy-handed with the alcohol these past few evenings. Morale of the troops is at an all-time low. All ship shape. Typical bower.
There's nothing more to do here, I guess. I should leave the camp now. But you'll have it coming, Bauer. With this, I'll be able to venture out for as long as it takes to find Sawa. Go and find Sawa! Get going. Autumn is here. We'd better leave the mountain soon, or we won't survive. Anyone there? Looks like someone's left their gear up there. Better check it out. Stopping to read in the middle of the wilds. That's sour all over. One of us must have stayed here. For a rest, maybe? Whoever it belongs to must have left in a hurry to have left it behind. One of the scientists must have stopped for a rest here. Most probably sour. But what made him leave in such a hurry that he left behind all these... What on earth is that? Mark must be what caused Sauer to stop and rest for a while. I'd better head out and try to find him to clarify the situation. What in God's... I was taking a break near the path. Hurry, we must go fetch the others. You go. He looks injured. I'd better stay and try and reach him before the current carries him away. Right, Leon. Okay. But don't lose him. All right, little fella. Don't move. I'm coming to get you.
Easy, Leon. Now's not the time to get a dunking. Take it easy. I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to look at your wound. Um, what can I give him to show I mean no ill? There you go. Good boy. It's all right. Don't be afraid. You're all right, fella. Good boy. Eat up, fella. Good, isn't it? <laughs> Leg broken. I just want to look at it, all right? Look, little fella. <laughs> if you let me see your wound, you can have another biscuit later, yes? It's broken, all right. It must be very painful. You're a brave boy. If I could clean the wound and brace your leg, we should be able to get you back to camp and make it better. Hold on. I'll be right back. Just be patient, little fella. I'll be right back. There's two bits of driftwood washed up there. They're straight enough to help get the Gorun back to camp. They're straight enough to help get the Gorun back to camp. I could use those creepers to tie up the Goron splint. They seem to be stuck. They should do fine to hold the Goron splint together. Here we go, fella. This is going to sting a little. Oh. There, wasn't so bad, was it?
Now we just need to find a way to get you back across. Did you do that, little fella? Well, <laughs> better join than talking, huh? Now we just have to wait for the others. Huh? Oh! You want another biscuit? <laughs> you learn quick. It was a young specimen, my darling Dana. Almost like a child. And as soon as we made eye contact, I knew this was a creature endowed with reason. When my companions joined me, I immediately sensed we did not share the same point of view. They seemed blinded by the discovery. They couldn't see the individual. It was clear the young Goran wasn't a person in their eyes, just a subject for study. In their excitement, they seemed to lose all common sense. What is wrong with it? Fruit! Have some fruit! You shut him up in a cage. What do you expect? He's frightened. Shut it up, or I'm going to gag it. What's that?
must be the Gorn's mother. If we give it back, she'll probably leave. And deprive us of an adult specimen? Are you mad? All right, Mama. Look at the size of her burger. Wound her. They will never get her back alive. Who said we need her alive? They can't all be live specimens, can they? No! But I couldn't let you shoot them. Reinhardt, you all right? But he... he's killed Berger. Bauer, wait. Y you saw. It was an accident. He was going to kill the Gorim, sir. So I, I... I had no intention to... Shut it, assassin! Oh dear lord, Berger, I'm sorry. I never meant to. That stone looks sharp enough. If I can reach it, maybe I can cut myself free. I'll bring him some soup. We can't let him starve to death. Bastard doesn't deserve food. Typical horse, eh? Always the good Samaritan. Aren't you afraid I was going to run for it? They intend to hand you over to the authorities in Kantar for the murder of Reinhard Berger. Doesn't surprise me. I came across a letter from Bauer that made me the scapegoat for everything that's gone wrong. Bauer had been planning this for some time now. Well, that's not how it's going to be. I don't agree with what you did. But you don't deserve what Bauer and Jaeger intend for you. You must pretend to be tied up. Wait for them to fall asleep. Then take your gear and get as far away from here as possible. Hear me? Yes, but what? Sir? 
So there you have the full story, my darling Dana. I don't know what will become of me, where my escape will lead me over the coming weeks, or what my life of a murderer on the run will be like. But always remember that my love for you is as strong as ever, and that my greatest desire is to hold you in my arms. I love you more than anything in the world. Leon, your mountain artist. Dana! Oh my goodness! Dana! What's wrong, Puppet? Lena, come quick! Dear Diary, so much has happened since I received Leon's letter a few days ago. I'm slowly recovering. Today, Papa and Mama told me that I was going to leave for a while. I'll explain what's going on, but I don't know where to begin. I need to gather my thoughts as I finish packing my suitcase. medication to treat my cough. Mama is forcing me to take it again since I collapsed after getting Leon's letter. I should pack it. Poor Papa and Mama. They were devastated when the doctor they called after I collapsed discovered my secret. That secret I dared not speak about to anyone. Not even you, dear diary. Now I can tell you. I'm pregnant, dear diary. Leon is the father. There were a lot of tears and screams when the doctor told Papa and Mama. But they finally decided to pretend that the baby will be the foster child of a missing relative. I know everyone expects me to feel guilty, but I can't help thinking of names. If it's a boy, of course it'll be Leon, to bring his father good luck. And if it's a girl, I think I'll call her Anna. Papa looks ten years older since he learned of my pregnancy. But what seems to have affected- Mama says Leon is nothing but an unscrupulous adventurer who took advantage of an innocent girl. But I know it's not true. I was planning to give up all my old toys and dolls. But now I guess I'm going to need them in a few years. As I said, dear diary, I'm leaving tomorrow. Papa and Mama are sending me to a sanatorium out of town for a few months. They say it's for continuing my convalescence. In other words, to send me and my secret away from prying eyes. My parents have accepted the offer from their longtime friends, the Zimmers, to pay for my hospitalization at the sanatorium. The Zimmers said it was in the name of their long friendship with Papa and Mama. But I think they feel bad that they can afford to flee Wagen in the Brown Shadow, whereas Mama and Papa can't.
the ideal summer and winter resort in the most picturesque and enchanting spot looking over the River Dombra. Well, let's hope that's true. Come on, Dana. There were enough tears already. Well, that should be it. All I need to do now is to conclude my diary entry and hide it somewhere safe with Leon's letter. I can't believe Leon is on the run, all alone in those mountains in the middle of winter. Now you know everything, dear diary. It is now, I guess, the time to say goodbye for a while. All I can hope now is that Leon will survive winter in those faraway mountains. And that he will find a way to come home and clear his name. We will wait until then, me and the baby. think there might be a family connection between you, Kate Walker? Well, all I know is that my family on my mother's side came from Europe. Well, like a lot of New Yorkers, right? I don't know from where exactly, but... And then there's the music box my mother left me, which it turns out plays the Wagen anthem. I mean, it all seems so... so magical. Almost like destinies at play. Or a coincidence, Kate Walker. The law of coincidences states that the more an individual is liable to believe in coincidences, the more coincidences happen to them. But then there's the fact, the fact, Oscar, that everyone keeps telling me Dana and I look so much alike. What do you plan on doing now, Kate Walker? According to the diary, Dana left for a sanatorium outside of town. The records might tell what became of her and her baby. But before we go... There's something that's been bothering me. What is it, Kate Walker? The pogrom that Frau Heigl told us about, the one during which the house and the neighborhood were ransacked, happened in 1938, if I recall correctly. Dana said that she was leaving for the sanatorium for a few months at the end of 1937. 
Indeed, Kate Walker. So it is very likely she was safe and sound over there when the pogrom occurred. Yes. But what if... What if she was home with her baby? I need to be sure before we leave for the sanitarium, Oscar. We need to search the neighborhood for more evidence. All right, Kate Walker. Where you lead, I will follow. As long as you don't forget your bag. Trust me, Oscar. You're the only friend I've got right now. I ain't losing you. Threats, riddled with misspellings and signed, Frank Hoss, that member of the Brown Shadow who added in for Leon at the refuge. Looks like he never forgave them, and was after Dana during the pogrom. Indeed, Kate Walker, but the very existence of this message could mean she wasn't home when those tragic events occurred. Come on, Oscar, we need to find more clues. So, according to that letter, Dana was supposed to stay at the sanatorium until December 1938. Looks like there were medical complications. We're getting close, but it's not enough to draw conclusions yet. Dana's initials. We were on the other side of this wall earlier, Kate Walker. It's like we've gone through a looking glass. I do not understand, Kate Walker. Forget it. I don't know what I'm saying. If you say so, Kate Walker. According to that book, the pogrom occurred at the beginning of November 1938. That's a good clue, I guess, but I need to find more. Ackerman, Fisher, Yorga. I can't find Dana here. Keller, Meyer, Ortel. I'm getting close. isn't mentioned here. Anton and Lena Rose. Tana's parents. Oh God, they were killed during the pogrom. Is Dana Rose also mentioned? It doesn't look like it, no. But I need to be sure. I think that's it, Oscar. We know that the pogrom occurred at the beginning of November 1938. Dana's parents, Anton and Lena, were killed, that's certain. But Dana was supposed to be at the sanatorium back then. Which seems to be confirmed by that 
message Herr Hoss left in the house, Kate Walker. Exactly. So I guess we're done here, Oscar. Let's take the tram back to the guest house. We'll try to find that sanitarium first thing tomorrow. So, there she is. The famous Kate Walker. Sorry, what? Donna Rose. I knew her very well, you know. Our Donna, darling. Waiting for the tram, aren't you? Well, we'd be better off speaking at the guest house. I hear there's a storm coming. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Miss Walker. Colonel Blake. Colonel Blake or Fräulein Junta? <laughs> Connecting the dots, are we? You're a very clever young woman. But you must be eager to know why I'm here in front of you, bearing the surname of one of Her Majesty's military officers. <laughs> <laughs> but here's our tram. Would you be so kind? You've been rather quiet. I would have thought you'd have some questions for me. No? You mentioned the guest house. Are you staying there too? Indeed, Miss Walker. It's actually Frau Wagner who told me about you. When she told me that you were looking for Dana, I knew I had to talk to you. Frau Wagner told me to call the Academy, which I did, and the Rector then redirected me towards the Bridge of Mists. And that's how I ended up wandering up and down it, asking about a mysterious American woman with a painting. Why did you change your name? I didn't. I just took it back. You see, I was born and raised in London. My parents were diplomats from Austria. Janet Blake was always my real name. And how did you become a British military officer? It doesn't sound like the usual career path for a famous artist. <laughs> Very true indeed, Miss Walker but I actually have been both during my lifetime. The British Secret Service hired me as soon as they heard I was going to work close to the brown shadow in Ostertal. Uh, back in the 30s, that was, just before I met Dana at the refuge. So you were some kind of double agent? You make it sound more romantic than it really was, miss. But yes, I guess one could say so. I guess you have new information about Dana for me? 
I might very well indeed, Miss Walker, but what if you told me first what that little investigation of yours has dug up about Dana? I know Dana was very concerned about Leon being on the run after the death of that scientist, Herr Berger. I, I can't blame her. How could he survive for the winter, all alone in the mountains, in a strange country? How could he? That's exactly the right question, Miss Walker. That origin expedition in Baltayar. What a mess that was. I discovered today that Dana became pregnant that summer of 37. Leon was the father, so her parents decided to hide her in a sanatorium outside town. Which, I assume, saved her from the night of the brown shadow pogroms in Wagen. You assume right, but her parents, on the other hand... Yes, I heard they didn't make it. Poor bastards, if you'll pardon my French. So, that's basically all I know. Can you tell me what happened to Dana after she left for the sanatorium to have her baby? I must confess, Miss Walker, that I was afraid you might overlook some of the painful information here, which is clearly the case. What do you mean? I... look. I think it would be best if we stay in this carriage until the very end. I know it is an odd request to make, but you really must see this for yourself. Well, I... Until then, I recommend you look outside the window. I guarantee it'll be worth your while. <laughs> <laughs> 